In the previous video, I talked about the central nexus logic, that core logic for the entire process that will ensure that feeds are not downloaded or websites that contain feeds are not accessed too frequently so as to violate the access frequency or update um, cycle that the website operators have in place. And so part of that is for me to be able to develop this process offline without an internet connection so that I don't run the risk of inadvertently accessing those, those feed sites. Now, I could do alternative methods of, let's say, erecting a web server and doing all of that. I thought about that, and I decided I'd rather, I'd rather go a different course with that. And so I'd rather go with a course that is fully offline and one that I know will work reliably even when there's no internet connection and you still want to access feed information, right? So I've used SQLite here and I've scanned the rows to get a count of the data based on the feeds, right? Based on the different uh, feed sources. And so when I do subsequent runs of this process, I can test for two things. One, that the feed intervals are being respected, that the logic, the central core nexus logic is in fact in operation, and two, that the changes I made that I showed uh, a couple of videos back to the data access layer, to the data access process, that that is actually working the way that I had designed in terms of either adding data to the database or making revisions to the database, right? And in most cases, in this, in this particular instance, the articles themselves are never changed. And the feeds are maybe partially changed, right? So the feeds would be changed administratively, right? So you could change the feed name or the feed um, URL, right? So that would represent a partial or a full modification. But in most cases, the feed uh, table will be updated in terms of the timestamp, and that's the only column that you would up update there. Same with the feed articles, right? Um, you would add rows to the feed articles tables, right? And in most cases, so that, that would be about the only modification operation you would have. And so here I did a screenshot using the snipping tool and Microsoft Paint, and um, I wanted to pull, put the two snapshots side by side because I've kept different versions of the database, right? So I would copy the database from its active directory. Wow, that's a loaded pun if I ever heard one in the Microsoft world. Let's just say in the uh, working directory for the software application, I, I take the database there and make a copy of it, and I copy it into a different directory under a different name, and then that way I can archive them and compare them against uh, one another. So SQLite makes that very easy and straightforward. So anyway, I saw that indeed the process is working as I expect at this point, that I'm seeing timestamps updated appropriately, updated at the right interval, no duplicates are being introduced, and that we have um, rows being added for the articles, and we have a status quo on the feeds table itself. So I'm quite satisfied with that, but now what I want to do is I want to be able to see this data before testing it in the user interface, right? Because the GUI application, the UI, that's going to show everything. That's going to show the feeds, it's going to show the articles, it's going to have all the data, it's going to be pulling from here or there, and that sort of thing. But I want to make sure that that process, that the process of actually retrieving the data is super solid. So I'm removing the integration project, the project that I had originally started out with where I was converting SQLite data over to a local SQL server database, right? That was something I was doing, I believe, last year, late last year. And so um, that was a good accelerant because I've spent a lot of time with SQL Server in my professional life. And so um, th that was a good option in order to work out the user interface. So that was more of a practice of working out the user interface. But now I want to work out the API itself, the API for retrieving data from SQLite. And while the process is very similar to what you would use with SQL Server, I've already evolved the program in such a way where 
it is atypical of many of the, the, the access approaches you would use with SQL Server. So I started a new project that I call Feed Visualizer, uh, the DB Visualizer. And basically it runs in the command line just like uh, the feed downloader. And these command line programs, they're set up to exercise and test out and figure out and refine the foundational code, the non-visual code, before we even get into all the intricacies of user interface development with graphics and animation and space, space layouts and typography and that sort of thing. And I call this software development approach, well, okay, so Steve McConnell in his uh, original book, because I want to give credit first, Steve McConnell wrote the book Code Complete, two, two editions of that book, and he explained bottom-up development versus top-down development. So I give credit to, to Steve McConnell for that. The approach that I use is similar but different in that I have an approach that I call the Apple software development approach. I made that up, but I've, I've coined that going as far back as 2005, 2006, right? I call it the Apple software development approach. And the Apple software development approach is basically um, based off of Steve Jobs, where you want to unify and have a holistic software design all across the board and as polished as the program looks on the outside is as polished as it's going to look on the inside, right? So you not only want to have a slick, uh, smooth, looking visuals, right, using React and Blazor and all this kind of stuff, or in this case, WPF, right? That's all good and well, but the whole party comes down when the code doesn't work right and you constantly have errors and you constantly have, you know, all this stuff going on. So I'd rather extend the maximum um, effort possible to have a solid foundation so when I do get around to the point of creating this slick, polished visual on the outside, that there's no question that it really is as good as it looks. So that's been my whole approach all along. But like Gandalf said in uh, the Lord of the Rings movie, I was delayed. So, you know, I'm making progress there and I'm getting there. But uh, the, the thing here is um, the visualizer is going to be based off of the same database name as the downloader. So they're essentially going to share um, the database, right? So I have a batch script here that when I run it, it copies the latest version of the, of the RSS database from the downloader's working directory over to a directory here where it can be examined without interfering with the processes of Visual Studio when it's generating um, new copies of that database or when it's compiling code and it needs um, exclusive access over the bin debug directory, right? So I've excised a or I've made a copy of the database for the purposes of uh, not interfering with Visual Studio and not having Visual Studio interfere with me when I need to look at the, the current state of the data. <clears throat> and so the visualizer here is based off of the feed downloader in terms of how the code is structured, right? How the code looks, the naming conventions, the style, and that approach. And when I compare, you know, I like, the, I like using this git uh, compare within Visual Studio. It reminds me of old Visual Source Safe. Who remembers Visual Source Safe? Visual Source Safe, raise your hands. And then you had Team Explorer, right? Well, the more things change, the more things stay the same. And um, you can go all the way back to the early 2000s and what you see on this screen, it, it was exactly like that in the early 2000s, exactly like it. So none of that's ever changed, right? So the more things change, the more things stay the same. And what I do like here is that I can compare what before and after, right, in the changes I made to the code. And I also like it so that, you know, if I need to like, oh, I deleted that line of code a little bit too early and I've already committed it to the database, right? Or something like that, you know, uh, I can use this to just say, okay, let me go find that real quick. But I also like it because it helps you with comparing your code so that you can write more uh, better quality Git committal statements, right? 
get commit messages. So anyway, um, so I got the visualizer code um, written. It's not as a, it's not as um, it, it, it's not as um, intricate as what you have with downloading the feeds. Okay, it's simpler. Now let me say it like that. It's it's a simpler process. I really just want to look at what's in the database, and I want to be able to do it. Um, in a way where I can control the formatting more easily through a program rather than uh, writing the SQL directly in SQLite by running the SQLite 3 uh, program instance, right? I mean, I could do that and I could keep doing that, but um, this is a very, this is a quicker and much more straightforward way to do that so that when I'm iterating through changes in the API for reading the data out of the database, it's not only much more straightforward, but it's much better compartmentalized so that I can um, zero in on problem areas with a microscope, with a scalpel, and address them. Or if I need to make wholesale changes, I can do that here and test it without barging into the user interface and having to conflate modifications of a API level, uh, foundational data processing level with those that impact the user interface and how information is visualized in the user interface and the event-oriented nature of the user interface and so on and so forth. So anyway, um, but so I got this code uh, written here and it looks right to me and just want to run it to see how everything looks and if everything looks good, I'm just going to move on and so far so good. That's basically what I was looking for. I just wanted to see it all go out on the screen and see now I can just go through and I can see all the feeds at a glance, uh, see that the data is being retrieved properly. And um, let's uh, pat ourselves on the shoulder if we could and say, good job.